Sheffield. Sheffield. Year on year, it's the same. Another WWE game is released, this time around it's WWE 2K19 and it looks nice and it has good adverts and it's pushed down your throat so much by WWE and you hope that maybe, maybe this time it will be as great as they promise. And it's just, well, this year it's alright actually. It's usually bad as I pointed out last year when I opened a video with exactly the same words as I just used here, just saying 2K18 instead of 2K19, but I digress. Subscribe to my channel, it will mean you're not a jabroni. So for the second time ever I've conducted some hard in-depth science to find out if, with proper real words from my brain, WWE 2K19 manages to put up a fight at all to the ever-reliable master that is the N64's WWF No Mercy. Let the science commence! Science with categories. Fewer categories than last time around, I should point out, owing to streamlining. You have to start with the stuff that immediately pokes your eyes like Roddy Piper on a bad day. The graphics. It's a big part of the package, how this stuff looks, and WrestleFolk games have always pushed to look as close to real as they can. Well, mostly. And it's in that respect WWE 2K19 blows it out of the water, whatever it is. My keen and cunning scientific eye might be trained to see the seams and imperfections, but who actually cares? The game looks like the real world, as long as you don't stare at the crowd too much. There are complaints to be had for 2K19 beyond the crowd. Some faces still look like they were designed by cruel children, likely because the art team thought it would be funny. And the lip syncing is a weird mix of fairly accurate yet akin to a South Park level of animation. But put up against No Mercy, it's it's not competition, is it? The N64 game came out two decades ago on the N64. A console which, you'll be surprised to hear, struggles to pump out visuals on a par with a game from Space Year 2018. You could try and make the claim that actually No Mercy boldly attempts a renaissance of the cubist techniques popularised in the early 20th century. That's a lie, you couldn't claim that. Nobody would claim that, not even a fool. The first fall is a comedy squash match, Braun Strowman beating three locals half to death for three minutes before pinning all three of them in a pile of three to the count of three. No Mercy is always sounded bad, tinny and low res. Can audio be low res? Yeah, sure, why not? It's a game full of hilarious short loops of music played badly, vague facsimiles of the Attitude Era's finest entrance themes. It is, in short, rubbish. WWE 2K19 takes advantage of all the tricks to make sure its audio is the toppest of top quality. It is, as they say, authentic in the musical interludes offered. And thanks to the vast technological difference between the N64 and modern machines, is able to throw in added extras like commentary and a licensed soundtrack. And that's where it falls apart, just as it did last time around, because that irritating need to put a licensed soundtrack of awful music and rancid on the game would be bad enough were it not for the commentary. I complained about this for 2K18, and I will continue to complain about it for all future and past WWE games until commentary is either abandoned or actually fixed. I doubt it ever will be fixed, given you met with constant repetition, the trio of Saxton, Cole and Graves sounding bored out of their minds, and, still, basic errors popping up, like when I was told about Daniel Bryan's career beyond the point I was actually up to in his showcase. This is what I was told while competing against The Miz for the US Championship. You two brought up that acrimonious relationship between The Miz and Daniel Bryan. Miz abused Bryan, and Bryan fought back, taking Miz's spot in the SummerSlam main event and then his United States Championship just a month later. After laying dormant for a few years, The Miz and Daniel Bryan's hatred resurfaced in the infamous Talking Smack segment. After Daniel Bryan returned to action and pulled strings to get The Miz moved to SmackDown Live, you know this rivalry is far from over, even after eight years. Spoiler alert, <laughs> probably. It's not possible to say No Mercy's sound is better than 2K19's, and yet here we are, No Mercy's sound is better than 2K19's because No Mercy doesn't infect my poor faltering brain with the ear disease that is commentary. The second fall, like a Miz face turn, sees a surprise nobody expected or actually wanted, with No Mercy grabbing an accidental countout victory. Oddly enough, there's been no change in No Mercy's roster since the last video. The 32 megabyte cartridge still features a whopping 74 wrestlers and other talent, and I'm still embarrassed to say, ugh, divas out loud. 
you get Stone Cold and The Rock, Stephen Richards in place of the big show, the all-time classic fan favourite, Ho, it's a good selection with enough variation on offer that nobody goes away empty-handed, especially not S.A. Rios fans. And again, the ability to create your own wrestlers is still there. Strange how a game from almost 20 years ago hasn't changed in the past 12 plus months. Hmm, very odd. Anyway, I haven't made any new wrestlers literally because I can't be bothered, but I do still remember making a very accurate Rob Van Dam on my OG copy of the game approximately 300 billion years ago. It's limited, but there is scope within it. Yeah, WWE 2K19 wipes the floor with no mercy though. This time you've got 197 unique playable characters including DLC. 239 if you include the alternative visions like the plentiful Stings and Undertakers. And 252 if you bring in non-playable characters and the extras from the career mode. It's a hell of a lot of faces, but while a lot of them are legends, it does seem strange that there's no SA Rios. Oh, also, there's a gold AJ Styles, but naturally I haven't unlocked him. So, a squash by 2K19 then, right? Well, hold your four horsemen a second there, Milado. There's always something with the roster in WWE games, something outdated or daft. I even mentioned one a second ago with the Big Show not being a part of No Mercy. And 2K19 is no different. A certain NXT champion at the time of recording is not in the game. At all. Nor will he ever be. Tommaso Ciampa, one half of Homebase's favourite tag team, just isn't in WWE 2K19. And that is absolutely ridiculous for him to not be present, for him to not be added in, for one of the champions of the company to not get a look in. I've heard all the excuses, but none of them fly straight for me. So he was injured when they were capturing faces and everything else. So what? Champa was in previous games. His likeness is there to be reused and updated, as has clearly been done with plenty of talent in the game. If someone can make their own version of him and put it up for download, he's the second most popular downloadable character behind Captain Pipebomb himself, then Ukes and Visual Concepts can pull their collective finger out and sort this nonsense. If you can put the big boss man, Bobby Heenan, and Andre the Giant in the game, even though they're dead, but you can't put in a current reigning NXT champion, then, well, I, I don't even know what to say. Apart from that it gives me absolutely no confidence in the product. Four versions of Sting, three Undertakers, even a trio of John Cena's, a man who clearly wasn't available for recording duties while making the game, but no Champa. Damn right I'm annoyed. This fall was clearly going to 2K19 until I interrupted, told people what's best for business, and changed it to the type of match No Mercy would easily win at, so a Judy Bagwell on a pole match or something. No Mercy gets the fall, with S.A. Rios riding high. Last year I said the 2K series career mode needed to boil it down, focus it more, make it something people will bother with, simpler is better. My undeniable influence over the world of gaming, I am a true legend after all, means visual concepts and ukes listen to me. Even if they didn't get in touch to talk over my ideas, like how I was pushing for the career mode to focus entirely on the life and times of the gobbledygooker and Bastion Booger. Anyway, what I'm getting at is that 2K19 surprised a lot of us by throwing back in a proper, straightforward career mode with angles, storylines, voiceovers and all sorts. It's linear, sure, but that's what a career mode should be, a story of someone coming from nowhere, in this case Buzz from BCW, to, well, somewhere. So. WWE in all its bright lights. I'll complain, because I want to, that the progress of your created superstar is slow to the point that it could reasonably be called static, and that some matches are just plain unfair, but that's another couple of points for another couple of point days. Look, career mode is actually alright here, I am surprised and impressed. It would be nice to see more of this next time around, a development of the theme and what you as a player are able to do, but this is a step in the right direction, it's notably self-aware regarding wrestling at times, which actually means it verges on being not thoroughly embarrassing a la career modes in the series past, but there is still significant room for improvement. Which leads me to, yep, how 2K19 should rip off No Mercy, because as some heroic YouTuber mentioned last time around, No Mercy features a career mode that functions how one should for a wrestling game. Basically, you don't have to just win. This creeps in at times in 2K19 with a few scripted endings to matches, which is cool, but I'd like to see a bigger nod in the N64's direction by allowing losses and having them not immediately end your progression. 
See, instead, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, losses in No Mercy's career mode just send you down a different path. This makes sense given wrestling is, dare I say it, predetermined, and losses should be a part of the fundamental experience, and changes in career paths should be factors that pop in. Just look at Jinder Mahal, who was, remember, WWE Champion for ages for no discernible reason not that long ago. Half of us forgot this. Anyway, this fall is a close-fought one, and WWE 2K19 looks like it's going to grab a well-earned victory for all its hard work in making a career mode actually worth playing this time around. But No Mercy is the wily veteran, and its understanding of how a career can and should pan out leads it to a ref bump chair shot dodgy pin victory. Glorious healed them. Bundling a few things together is an approach all wrestling fans can appreciate, like a good battle royale where all the lower mid-card gets to be on TV for once, or most women's matches which still end up being six-person tag matches because hey, storylines are too hard to write for those with vaginas, right? And so it is, I've bundled together a few of the bits I had separate last time around. It all feeds into each other anyway, so I think it works. And if not, there's always 2K20 versus No Mercy. So mechanically, 2K19 hasn't shifted much from the 2K template. There's tweaks and tucks under the bonnet while some glitches have been ironed out. Though I still see plenty of them kicking in while playing, usually with arms bending in stupid ways and, more egregiously, things like weapons you're unable to pick up or daft angles meaning people won't get set up right to go through a table or whatever. It is fun far better than the first few 2K WWE games were, and it seems to be slowly getting better, so I'm happy with that. That said, it's not No Mercy, and No Mercy is still my boy. The AI reverses your moves way too frequently, especially when the difficulty is artificially increased as you progress through career mode, but generally there's a lack of focus on reversals, and that's endlessly refreshing next to 2K19's absolute obsession with them. Did I mention that? No? Oh. 2K19 is clinically addicted to reversals and it's annoying on a fundamental level. Yes, they're limited, but it doesn't stop it from being a flow-breaking daft feature. Modes-wise, yep, they're there. No Mercy still doesn't have Hell in a Cell, even though I wished really hard for it to be added, and 2K19 has everything you'd expect apart from the really rubbish stuff from the Attitude and Ruthless Aggression eras. Yes, sangry internet boys, I'm saying I'm glad there's none of that bra and panty zickiness, get over it. But generally, if you want a regular non-gimmicky mode in either game, you're covered. There's a reason I boiled this part down, and it's because talking about options for game modes for longer than I am doing is something that would bore me into a coma. Tornado tag for life, yo. In-game purchases? Well, they've changed very little from last time around, would you be surprised to hear? Both games feature methods in which to earn unlocks for you're actually playing, though 2K19 also lets you use real cash to buy virtual currency with which you can open random card packs, which is a big bit of bullshit as far as I'm concerned. Yes, I know you can buy outfits and whatever directly, but they're much more expensive that way and ugh, I don't care enough about this. Basically, in one game you can unlock Ken Shamrock and the other you can endlessly open random packs of moves and taunts and whatever else while being nudged towards buying in-game currency with real money. Frankly, that latter part can die in fire. The gauntlet match of combi categories is over and the arm raised is that of no mercy. It's battered and bruised, 2K19 pulled out all the stops, but like any match versus Hogan in his prime, the backstage politicking meant it was never going to win. Formerly known as how much I want to play it still, this is an important category and one that's seen one of the biggest shifts this year. Why? Career mode. It might be riddled with slow progress and unfair matches and the way Michael Cole says BUZZ makes me want to shave off his soul patch, but it is a proper career mode. I'd be a hypocrite if I said I didn't care about that, so I won't. I do care about it. I like it, and it's making me play 2K19 far more than I have any of 2K's other WWE games, so it's brilliant work, a huge step in the right direction, and still not enough to beat out No Mercy? Because No Mercy is my game that I've been playing for nearly 20 years now, and I'm still playing it, and it's almost like this category's a fix. Who knew? Still, I will heap the praise on 2K19 for making a massive stride towards being captivating to play. No Mercy thwocks again 2K19 with a stunner out of nowhere, a clean but briefly unexpected victory for the old hand. Looking at everything in a fair and balanced fashion, utilising proper, genuine, actual science, I know it's science because I was wearing a lab coat the entire time, doing all that I've been able to come to a final conclusion. And so, the science says, officially, the verdict is, would you believe it, the scores still don't matter. 
I didn't even count them as I went along this year. Yes, it's another Bransfield screw job. No Mercy is still my game, still the better game. I can play it endlessly and declare, with a tear in my eye, this is the greatest wrestling game ever made. 2K19 made a good show of it though, and maybe one year it'll catch up, but at the same time, it never will, because my emotional attachment to the N64 game is just too strong. Strong enough that I've done the same video twice, pretty much. And that, friends, is hard science that cannot be argued with. Thanks for watching, please do like, share, subscribe and get the tables. If ever there were time in the world I'd explain why I don't bother talking about the No Mercy mods, Here Comes the Pain or Smackdown vs Raw 2006. And yes, I'm still aware Virtual Pro Wrestling 2 exists. Bye!